Yeah, yeah, I think we can start maybe. Yeah, we've recorded already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, so today uh, we will be discussing about uh, applying result-based management strategies. Let me just share my screen. Is it visible? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, loud and clear. We can hear you. All right. Can you see my screen? It's loading. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we will be applying the result based uh, management strategies. Um, but before that, let's just recap uh, some of the uh, things that you discussed on Monday, I believe. Uh, some of the, the core and principles of uh, RBM. Um, those are, uh, you need to have a clear on your objective. Uh, and the second one is result, it has to be result or oriented planning and also monitoring and evaluation. And it also involves the stakeholders, stakeholder uh, engagement, uh, learning and adopting uh, management, and also accountability and transparency. These this are the, the core principles of uh, RBM. And I believe you also discussed uh, why it matters and uh, their benefits, right? Um, it basically focus on uh, outputs instead of activities. Um, and then I believe you also discussed about building the RBM uh, frameworks or framework. Uh, the, basically there are three, three steps that you need to do. Uh, the first one is setting the smart goals. Uh, your goals has to be specific, um, adaptive, result-oriented, and also time-bounded. And also, you need to define your outputs, right? And then you have to establish uh, the impact indicators also. And lastly, you need to uh, build the bridge, uh, connect those components uh, logically. Uh, once we have done that or understand that, uh, we can apply the uh, strategies for our project management, right? So the RBM lifecycle uh, basically contains um, three steps and they are, um, interconnected, they are cyclic. Uh, first step is planning and then monitoring and then uh, evaluation. Uh, I believe you have discussed all this and I will also try to mention them. Uh, setting the, the vision, that, that's like the objective and defining the result map and the RBM uh, framework. And today we will be uh, discussing about the, the planning, um, the monitoring, and the uh, evaluation. So this is the basic life cycle of uh, RBM. So uh, putting it into action, uh, uh, as I said, the first step is planning after you have your uh, framework. The next or the, uh, the first action you need to do is you have to plan. So effective RBM starts with uh, meticulous 
planning, uh, which means you have to gather uh, the key stakeholders. Uh, you need to include the beneficiaries. Also, uh, you have to develop a collaborative uh, action plan. Uh, and then you have to outline some of the, the things for planning clearly. Uh, the first one is activities, or in your case, your tasks. You have to define uh, the specific actions needed to achieve uh, your goal. Uh, what are the activities that you need to follow uh, so that you can achieve your outputs that you uh, put uh, at the first place? So ensuring those activities are realistic and defined and also clearly the, the desired output, the desired output. Uh, the, the second one is uh, your timeline. Uh, you need to establish a realistic timeline for completing a certain task. Uh, maybe task one, maybe task two, you have to uh, have a, a realistic timeline for each task. So this will ensure, um, in general, everyone is aware of deadlines and fosters accountability. Uh, here we are discussing the, the, the general RBM in an organization. So. Um, this timeline has to be known by everybody so that everyone is aware of the deadlines and that uh, everybody is uh, involved and uh, do their activities in time. Uh, the next one is resources. So you need to identify the resources needed for your task or activities. It might be a hum human source, financial, material, etc., uh, to accomplish or implement the, the 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 project or the activities. So uh, allocating resources strategic strategically uh, to ensure activities are adequately supported. Uh, so this is the, the the first step you need to do, uh, and also. Uh, roles and responsibilities. Uh, since your project is individual, uh, this might not be uh, important for now, but in general, in using uh, RBM, um, uh, roles and responsibilities has to be uh, allocated for each team. Uh, you need to clearly define the roles and responsibilities for, for each team member. Uh, and that fosters ownership and avoids confusion. And the last one is communication strategy, uh, which means we need to establish a clear communication plan outlining how the progress updates and the critical um, information will be shared with uh, all the uh, team members. So you need to have um, a clear communication strategy. Uh, for example, in the 10x uh, system or in the uh, 10 academic system, every day at um, 11 a.m. in the morning, you have a stand-up, right? So that that's uh, one strategy of communication and your Slack uh, channels. So you have to establish such kind of uh, communication uh, strategies when you do your uh, project. So that will be uh, during the planning phase. And the next one is monitoring. Once we uh, planned uh, everything, uh, the next step is to execute the, the plan, which means once your plan is in motion, uh, you need uh, a consistent monitoring. Uh, it's very important and we will see it later, we, we can loop back and forth. Uh, it's a cyclic process. So this involves uh, regularly collecting data to track progress towards uh, your outputs and ultimately uh, ultimately your goals, right? So those uh, data might tell you how the, the project is progressing and if there are uh, some actions that need to be taken, uh, you have to act on that. Um, so during this monitoring uh, stage, 
uh, we need to uh, monitor our activities, uh, activity completion. We have to track the uh, completion rate of the planned activities. And in that case, you have to identify if there are any delays or roadblocks that might hinder the progress of the, the project. So you need to monitor the activities that you outlined or um, plan in the first phase. And then you have to also uh, monitor the output delivery, um, monitor the successful delivery of the planned outputs, which means you have to evaluate if the outputs are being processed, pro produced according to the established timeline that you uh, put in place earlier or in the uh, planning phase. And then uh, you have to also monitor the performance indicators, uh, usually the KPIs. So regularly assess your uh, impact indicators to gauge the actual change or the benefit resulting from your program. So you need to ask now and then, are we on track to achieve our de uh, desired outcomes or deliverables? So you need to uh, monitor those uh, also. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, the the last one, or yeah, uh, in uh, the RBM is adopting for continuous improvement, uh, which means, as I said earlier, it's a cyclic process, right? We we have to evaluate and go back and forth. So the the uh, beauty of RBM uh, is its flexibility. So uh, data collected during monitoring serves as a valuable tool, tool for adoption. Um, if your progress falls short of expectation, if you feel that you are not uh, attaining the uh, outputs or the expected activities in time, uh, that, that's when you start to analyze the data and identify areas for improvement. Uh, this is like evaluating your activities back and forth. So, so those some of them are uh, review your activities, which means uh, are they effective in generating the desired outcomes? Uh, so you need to adopt a process if needed to ensure they contribute to the to achieving the the goals. Right, and the next one is allocating uh, resources if needed. Uh, if certain activities proven to be less effective, uh, you need to reconsider or, uh, allocating resources toward this uh, initiative with greater impact. So reallocation of resources might be necessary to uh, improve or to uh, get the a desired goal or outcome. And lastly, uh, adjust your goals, right? Sometimes, uh, our goals might not be feasible or somehow may not be attainable or measurable. In that case, we might go back and uh, uh, revisit them. So in, in rare cases, uh, external factors may uh, necessitate that to adjust your uh, overall goals. In that case, you have to uh, revisit your goals. So ensure stakeholders are also involved in any significant adjustments uh, during your goal revision. So these are the, the three uh, important steps uh, or strategies that we use uh, in RPM. Any questions? Is it clear? Yes. It's, um... Quite, it's quite um straightforward planning, um, monitoring, and evaluation. But yeah. I'm trying to just oppose. I'm trying to just oppose the use of um the RBM, especially with the assignment we are giving this week. Because the yeah. data we have with has been done by the engineering team already. So more or less, we are expected to act like a manager to bring up make sense out of what the engineering team has brought out. So these um, RBM, I guess what we'll be expected to do is just to talk briefly about how this method can be used in achieving that, because uh, allocating resources, the um, understanding the goal, 
establishing the limitations and all that cannot basically be done with the task I think I don't know uh yeah so this the the, the strategies that I have been discussing is for an organization when it comes to your project uh it's somehow specific right there is no data collection or um, resource allocation uh, etc right if necessary you uh, can re reallocate resources that this is not for your in your project but reviewing your activities now and then uh, is part of uh, your project right you, you you have different tasks like task one task two task three etc those are the activities that you, are, you need to perform right so those has uh, has reviewed uh, during your evaluation so you need to uh, explain your uh, rbm strategy for your project that that's the idea so those those might not be um for example they, there is no stakeholder involved in this project right uh, this is um, an artificial project or uh, the the moonlight company right so but in in the real world when you do a, a project management and if you want to apply the rbm you need to follow uh, these uh, three uh, important steps is that clear absolutely thank you pleasure any other question Anyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, on the, on, the, on the monitoring progress, you talk about uh, performance indicators, but uh, it's something that I don't understand. I don't know whether you can elaborate more on that performance uh, indicator. Uh, key performance indicators uh, are some of the terms that we use to, um, how, how can I call it? Um, uh, I mean, express the, the, the performance of something, right? So this has to be uh, uh, regularly monitored. Is that clear? Key performance uh, indicators. The, the performance indicators are indicators or terms that we use to uh, measure the uh, sub activity. Yeah. Uh, Tin Academy raised. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ten Academy team. Oh, was that a mistake? They raised their hand. Any other question? Uh, is it clear or? The, the concept is well understood. Thank you. Uh, someone, Colajo, you will say something, or I said the concept I... is well understood. Thank oh, you. Oh, uh, there is someone else who raised his hand. Faiz oh, Sayo. Okay. All right. Um. So. I think while studying, while reading on RBM, I was just trying to compare, you know, it to the normal project management, the traditional project management that I've been accustomed to. And I think for to to a uh, to a level, I think I I mean to like differentiate. So please, I still want to just speak more, you know, on how is this really different from the normal project management. Sorry, I don't know if this has been said earlier before the class. I I came in late. So I just like want to know how is this really different? It stands out. 
your question all right so i said uh speaking of the normal project management the traditional project management which i am accustomed to i said while well, um, yeah. you know, i've been trying to see what the difference is and how are we and the standard from the normal oh, project oh, management. Uh, all right thank you that's a good question um in in, in normal or in the and uh, normal project management, it's mainly focusing on completing activities or tasks, right? Uh, I think you, you have discussed that already. That, that's what I told. But uh, RBM focus on outcomes or outputs, right? Not the activities. Finishing one activity doesn't mean that uh, you are going to attain your goal. Right, so you have focus uh, your activities so that you can attain an outcome or an output. So your measure has to be the output, not the activity. That that's the difference between the, uh, the formal or the normal the, uh, project management and the RBM. Um, yeah. Any other question? There is someone. Oh, no, there, there is no formula, right? There is no formula for um, the gauge. Rather, it's an indicator. Uh, it depends on the project that you are uh, working on. Is that Gitaria? Ninja? Yeah. All right. Um, if there are any other questions, you are welcome. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. Any question? All right. Thank you. Have a good day.